Hi, it's Johnny Ferreira, and we're in the upper room here with Joe Kelly on WVOF. And that was the lead-off track from a great CD we've been featuring here on the upper room with Joe Kelly and WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut, from rock and roll saxophonist is Johnny Ferrara, and that's wine, women, and song. Great song to kick it off, and we're honored to be joined right now from the man himself. How you doing, Johnny? Hey, Joe. Thanks for calling. Well, I got to ask you, did I pronounce your name right? Ferrara. Ferrara, okay. I was in the ballpark. <laughs> Very close. Right, right. So, uh, you know, you've been playing great music, and, and I, I noticed you made a... Uh, a comment about your la- your most recent CDs, Always You're Famous, right? So you, you still loving rock and roll saxophonists? Yeah, yeah I've, uh, I've been working on other musical projects, but uh, none as extensive as a brand new complete CD or anything like that. Um, you know, uh, but the new one is always your favorite, just like your your newest song is always your favorite, but, you know, <laughs> until it settles down a bit right. you start on the next one, but... But uh, that's that's how it is when you're uh, when you're uh, creating songs, I suppose. Now th- this is your fourth solo CD, and uh, yeah. t- t- tell us about choosing Wine, Women, and Song. You know, it really swings and it's got some great moments to it. Well, uh, you know, I, I write about my favorite things, I suppose. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> wine, Women, and Song. That was uh, actually um, I had recorded that uh, years earlier, and but we uh, we we play it all the time live and. Over the years, I've added, uh, I've added people. I've added especially horns from the first CD back in the '90s. I um, we started using horns more and more, and uh, we had some cool things um, added to the some of the arrangements, especially that one. And there's a breakdown of just the horns, and the horns really add a big part in the um, in the backing of the song. So I had to redo it uh, because it just uh, jumps up so much so much higher when, when you add the horn section in there so that that's why I, I i decided to redo that one now besides yourself on saxophone uh what other instruments and players did you bring to the record um i have a a, a trumpet player um here in town that uh, usually does a, a lot of work with me uh, vince my he's a vince my uh, he's a um a very talented musician that that uh, writes and uh, composes for a lot of things, a, f- a film around here, and uh, and uh, has his own projects, his own CDs as well. Uh, they're more funky, jazzy kind of CDs, um, but he also has been playing in, in my band for, uh, oh, uh, 2000, since about before 2000, probably eight, eight, or eight, eight or nine or ten years, uh, it seems like. Um, so there's Vince and, and another uh, guy on that CD that doesn't uh, do a whole lot of live stuff with us is Hugh Fraser, who's a trombone player, who, um, uh, of course, in, in Canada here, he's very well known as a, um, a, jazz, uh, a jazz player, but uh, very versatile and uh, great tone, plays the, has a big, big, big tone, and actually I think we've added, added a bit of that bass bass trombone on some of those tracks just uh-huh. it up a bit so you know and there's uh, those two guys and then myself uh, just on, on the tenor stuff and um, in those days I had my hands on a baritone sax which I don't have kicking around anymore but yeah, I, I see a picture of that uh, yeah huh? I, I've seen a picture of you playing that you have a picture of me on the berry on oh, the baritone right oh yeah yeah I, I, I never uh, I, I didn't own it but it was just hanging around a friend of mine lent it to me and uh he has since passed away, and I, I lost track of his uh, his horn. I, I, maybe his family took it. I don't know, but I didn't end up with it, so I, I don't have it kicking around anymore. But but it was fun to it was fun to blow when when I could fit it into stuff, and I, I had it kicking around here with my own mouthpiece on it, and um, no more. <laughs> right. Our special guest right here on the Upper Room in WVOF is Mr. Johnny Ferrer, and we want to give his website. Uh, J O H N N Y F E R R E I R A dot com. You can go there to order the CDs, and he's got four solo CDs. The current one being Rock and Roll Saxophonist, and you also can go and you know, I, you know, one thing I got to give you a lot of credit is that you definitely put saxophonist beside yourself in a nice spotlight on, on your website and what you're talking about. Yeah, because uh, they uh, they influenced me, and um, I find where a uh, 
we're a small tribe, you know. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, harmonica players and p- piano and guitar players and singers out there. And the, the, the you know, the saxophonist uh, le- either leading uh, their own bands and or, uh, you know, being a, more of a rock and blues uh, player. Um, there's not a lot of them um, that I know of and uh, people that I know don't know of any. I mean, um, there's a lot of, you know, jazz players and, uh, and stuff like that, but but rock and blues uh, sax players leading their own bands. I mean, I know a few of them, <laughs> and I know I'm sure there's a few more that I don't know, but it doesn't go much beyond that, you know. Uh, you know, we're gonna. T- so I like to, uh, I like to uh, uh, call them to the attention of people that that know me and are, are subscribers of my website, and they keep in touch with a few of them, and I, and I. Uh, Quite often, we'll we'll talk about uh, what they're doing and 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 lay the music on uh, on my subscribers from them. That because I know if they're fans of mine, most likely they'll be fans of those guys because they're sort of in the same bag as I am. And like I say, there's not many of us, so uh, it's nice to to share the you know the, the ones that are out there with the, the few people who are fans of that kind of stuff, right? We're gonna get into another song from rock and roll saxophonist from Johnny Ferrara right now. This is a uh called swing that thing and tell tell us a little bit about the influence on uh, you know louis jordan louis prem and uh buddy johnson yeah well buddy was uh on my first cd i recorded about oh at least two or three of his songs because they were such um that whole sound that buddy had was such an inspiration to me doing this whole uh, swing thing and uh i really like the uh the big band from that era but um like even Count Basie and uh, and those guys, but when I heard Buddy Johnson's band, um, it, it just it just uh, became a favorite of mine because he not only had that big band sound that the, the, those guys had, but he was more he had one foot more into the R and B and the uh, the the rock and roll, the early rock and roll um, element in it m- much more than the other guys, where the other guys had their foot more in the in the jazz you know duke ellington and, and cal basie and the and even the, the miller bands and those guys they were coming from a little bit different place and i, I think uh, buddy johnson was uh, was the guy for me and then of course the jumping craziness of uh, of louis jordan and and then, and then later louis prima <laughs> so it's hard to ignore that right and, and you've got some great style clothing and, and you you know i'm sure uh you know people take note of that when you're playing live my clothing? Yeah, yeah, you got some cool stuff. I have a few brightly colored suits, you might say. Right, right. right. <laughs> sure, it goes with the it goes with the style, you know, with the swing and with the jump and with the rock and roll. Right. So we'll get into this right now from rock and roll saxophonist Johnny Ferrer is with us. It's a great honor to have him on the show, and this is called "Swing That Thing." That's from Johnny Ferrer once again. "Swing That Thing," and Johnny's with us right here. He's out. Johnny's out in uh, Vancouver, and did you grow up out in Vancouver area? Yes, I did. Yep. Uh, how's the uh, How's the musical scene out there now? Um, you know, every, people say it's slow, and then I I go somewhere else, and they say it's slow, and then I go somewhere else, and they say the same thing, and then you know, I think people think the grass is always greener on the other side. Uh, I think, but traveling around a bit as I do, I. You know, there's there's cities that have more places to play, but, you know, they're bigger cities, you know, and they have more people to, to, to go there and stuff. But uh, I hear the complaints from every musician. Yeah, you'll hear them in New York, too. We're, we're just yeah, out. Yeah. There's tons of places to play in New York, but look how many people are living there and look how many musicians in New York. Right, are. right. It's all relative, really. But we got, a, we, got, um, we got people that go out here. I mean, very few clubs. Uh, what I find... Uh, is that the clubs that are here or more are DJ oriented? Uh, as when I was growing up um, and getting into my uh, 20s and stuff, so you know, quite a, quite a while ago, back in the 70s and into the 80s, I um, I found we could go to a bar and hear, you know, we could hear bands playing um, every almost every night in some places, every night in other places, and at least on weekends and others, but. Um, now the, those same clubs will rarely have a live band only for a special event they it's usually more of a dj right mm-hmm. that's what i notice 
Uh, you can get rock and roll saxophonist by going to johnnyferrara.com, Johnny, F-E-R-R-E-I-R-A.com, uh, cdbaby.com. Uh, some other places you can get it as well, available for download? Um, yeah, they have, uh, CD Baby's got a whole uh, thing tied up into the uh, digital download. It's on the iTunes and, and a whole list of others that, it, that it's on the CD Baby website uh, on, on my page, but I don't, re- I don't remember all those places. There's too many. There's yeah. Too <laughs> many around. Well, you've got, you've got it. We get, we get the digital downloads. You know, people can download single songs. Uh, a lot of people are doing that these days, I, I find. Um, you know, it's good. I mean, people have been putting out albums with, uh, you know, especially pop records that they only have one or two good songs on them, and then they, have, they go out and buy the whole record, and they only like one or two songs, so they, uh, they respond by only <laughs> downloading those one or two songs, right? It makes people put out better records, I think. Yeah, but, but nothing beats playing live, right? No. And, you know, the energy of the people, especially when you can get a, a larger band, like, um, you know, a six, seven, eight-piece band with uh, two or three singers and two or three horns, and, uh, besides the uh, regular sort of guitar, bass, and drums and stuff like that. So the energy, right? That's why those big bands back then had a whole lot of energy, because they had about 15, 18 people on stage. It just creates more energy, and that, and that comes down to the audience. In re- which in return comes back to the players, which is this reciprocal thing, right? Mm-hmm. That's why the room starts yeah. jumping and buzzing because the energy's coming back off the musicians and then back, back their way again through the crowd again. So, you, you still uh, listening? Do you do you buy a lot of music or do you have any favorite artists yourself? I buy uh, not a lot. Um, I kind of I get interested in compilations that come out like might be an like, like an old rock and roll sax compilation I ordered a while back and. Weird, weird stuff. The the I don't buy um, I don't buy any much new stuff. Uh, the the players that are putting out new stuff, they're uh, usually my friends who send it to me, anyways. You know that kind of stuff. But but um, there's not a whole lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of um, most of the stuff I buy is probably was probably recorded in the 40s and 50s. <laughs> but, but you did, but you did grow up with. The- a new compilation that's that's made up of, of older music you know I like I get into stuff like Motown and 60s rock and um, and 70s stuff and big band jazz and all, all sorts of stuff but uh, haven't bought any new, much new stuff lately I, I've been just doing my own stuff when you're doing a lot of your own stuff it's, it's you get the time in to check out a whole lot of other stuff you know, it's like when you're touring you can't go out and hear people because you're playing all the time you know how about uh, you? Knew you you talked. You were in the recording studio. You have a home studio. What have, what have you I been? Do, yeah. What have you been working on? We're just fooling around here uh, with some new stuff. Um, I mean, I just I just wrote, today I wrote a tango. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Which is weird, I know, but uh, I have this little accordion I bought, and I play the accordion, and uh, I thought I would try and write a tango. So here I am doing it, and uh, a guy was um, talking to me about uh, needing some weird music uh maybe in a in a film or something and and you never know like so i just started writing this tango to to see if it could be used so i, I do uh different projects like that and and you've, roll, tango swing you name it <laughs> and, you, and you've got a lot of movies being made out your way too right yeah, not a lot i i've gotten a couple of my songs picked for a, a couple of television movies filmed here and uh there's some shows that uh are filmed here from some um, through some American companies down in LA, and they come up here. They call Vancouver Hollywood North. So right, right. Um, we get the odd uh, the odd director and producer hunting around for for music. And uh, actually, some of my swing music was was put in two or three local shows. Um, um, uh, let's see, Mysterious Ways is one show, and uh, I forget the names of them because I, I don't watch those shows on TV. So. Right. Right. <laughs> But they're just local shows that are on like your regular channel. I think they're they're American shows, but there uh, there's a whole whack of them that are actually filmed up here in Vancouver, along with movies. Uh, uh, yeah, there's good uh, opportunities to get your music placed in that if you hook up with the right people. It's timing, you know, getting to know the right people for the right project and having the right song uh, sitting here. Or uh, you know, that's why I'm always writing something. So. It could be for a next CD project or not. It could be for something totally different too. So, 
that keeps keeps me busy. Johnny Ferrar is with us. We'll be re-airing this in its entire for entirety for three four days on Upper Room with Joe Kelly dot com and. Johnny's uh, CD, a rock and roll saxophonist. You can get it at johnnyferrer.com. F R E R. Excuse me. F R. Excuse me. F E R R E I R A. dot com. That's why I put how to pronounce. I know. I did. I did on see my that. website. <laughs> All these DJs were phoning uh, the guy who distributed my CD. They were actually phoning him, going, "Hey, how do you pronounce that guy's name?" Right. Right. As a joke, he asked me to do a little tag for I did see the show, that. and I did. And he he, uh, he thought it was a howl, so I ended up putting that uh, as a button on my website, and, and people have commented on it. It's pretty funny. Uh, I before E, except after C, and in Ferreira. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense, but it, it's a Portuguese name, actually. So. Oh, okay, cool. we we got to go out with a couple ones from the album Rock and Roll Saxophonist, uh, Lady. A little bit of change of pace right there. Second into dancing is not my thing. And who, who's the female vocalist on the record? Oh, that's um, that's Kathy uh, Kathy Saint Germain. She's um, a singer here in Vancouver who uh, who origin originally is from um, from Winnipeg. That's like in the middle of Canada. And uh, when she was growing up, her her family had a, a TV show. On they had their own TV show. Like her dad and mom were kind of famous in Canada and. Her and her siblings were like uh, sing, singing on this weekly television show. You know, it'd be like 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 the Johnny Cash show in, in America kind of thing. But I think it was called Family Brown, or I'm not really sure. But uh, I, I I didn't watch it when I was a kid. But but she's here and um, and uh, works here as a, as a singer. She's awesome. Has a sister who works here as well, and um, and her sister sings in my band quite frequently. Uh, her name is Sherry St. Germain, and, and we'll be coming out with her new album soon. And uh, I think she was a finalist in the Canadian Idol show, which is like your, you know, American Idol show. But right. she was like in that, and she was in the, I got in like the top five or top ten or something, but mm-hmm. didn't actually win it. But uh, she got up there. So, yeah, it's, it's a kind of a, it's a singing family, the, those guys. But uh, that's Kathy on that song. And uh, Kathy and... Uh, Oh, and another girl whose who's dad, uh, Saffron Henderson, whose dad is Bill Henderson, who's in a band called Chilliwack, another big famous band here. Um, you know, older kind of classic rock from the 70s type band. Um, so yeah, people that are very heavily tied into music and musical families, it seems. All right, two in a row right now. This is from Johnny Ferrara, and I'm going to thank you, Johnny. Okay. So Rock and roll saxophonist. Get it right now. This is Johnny Ferrara. Hey, it's Johnny Ferrara here, and you're in the upper room with Joe Kelly and G. Dusso. <laughs> 